Hey, this is Adam Torres, and I'm here to tell you that it has never been easier to start your very own podcast. At Mission Matters, our goal is to amplify stories that matter. That means we want to help you start your podcast because your story matters. We can do this in three different ways. One, join our podcast school and take a free or paid course. Two, visit our resources page where we've already figured out what you need, such as where to host your podcast. Or three, heck, we can even do everything for you through our podcast agency, including editing for cheaper than you can do in-house. Oh, and no contracts, services month to month. Get started by heading over to missionmatters.com and click on Start a Podcast. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Arjun Morthy on the line. He's co-founder and CEO over at The Factual. Arjun, welcome to the show. Thanks very much, Adam. It's great to be here. Oh, man, Arjun. So uh, I'm excited to get into today's topic because this is a big one. So finding unbiased news on trending topics, I mean, how hard is that to do nowadays? Let's say it's, uh, for me it's, it's even hard, and I'm a member of the media, so just throwing that out there. Sometimes I'm trying to fact check <laughs> things, and I don't, know if, I don't know if clickbait got me. I don't know who got me, but I'm repeating things not on the mic because I wouldn't do that other than the air that I don't know is credible. But I know in my mind I'm like, oh, is this right? Is this not right? And sometimes we just don't know. So that's what – um, I, we're going to talk about today, but just to kind of set the context and the tone for the overall conversation, just to kick it off, tell us a little bit more about The Factual, please. Sure. So The Factual is a startup based out of California. Uh, it's a small company, myself, my co-founder, and about uh, eight or nine uh, part-timers. And we've been working on this company for about four years now. We've built this technology that rates individual news articles for how credible they are. And the technology looks at four factors that most of us associate with credible news. So the first is how well researched and evidenced an article is. The second is how unopinionated or neutral its tone is. Uh, The third is how much of a topical expert the author is, that they've written on this topic a lot, extensively, exclusively, et cetera. And the last is the site's reputation. Uh, One of the really neat things is we don't take into account popularity signals. So a rating for an article uh, can be very high, even if you're a small news outlet. We don't just favor the big guys. We also don't care about where you are in the political spectrum. And so what ends up happening is we end up finding high-quality journalism across the political spectrum, not just on one side. Um, And so the upshot is we find we run this algorithm on about 10,000 news articles every day that are published in the United States around the world. We group it into topics and find out what's trending, and then we highlight the highest scoring ones on both sides of the political spectrum as well as some deep, uh, well-researched pieces. And uh, we uh, deliver all of this in a newsletter every day. That's how most of the people get uh, the news from the factual as well as a website. So all that put together, we now have uh, a fairly large audience getting credible, unbiased news and trending topics uh, every day. Man, that is amazing. I love the concept. And one of the big things I like about what you're doing is, um, in my mind, is that, you know, without a platform like the Factual or without things like that, like there's no, um, I don't want to say incentive, but it's hard for like real journalism to take place. Because if you're, you know, I mean, some people obviously like the, you know, hardcore journalists, they have to, you know, it's in their blood. Like they, they can't not do it for the really, really hardcore journalists. But, but other than the people that maybe fall in that line, like there's some other really talented people that could have been and really want to put out good work, but it's really hard to monetize. Like it's really hard to make a living doing it. And it's not like, you know, in the past where they could have like, um, you know, they could, they could place they could get a certain amount out there in terms of content they could sell like nowadays it's just so cluttered and so difficult that this in my opinion has the ability to to elevate like those real journalists out there um so tell us a little bit more about you know how how you how so far you're four years in i believe you said a little over four years and like tell us a little bit more how this has worked in terms of like trending topics and other things and your response that you've gotten from this so far 
Yeah, so, so far it's been working really well. You know, honestly, the first year or two were very difficult. We're just trying to get product market fit, build something that mm. people really wanted. And uh, we failed a bunch of times, to be honest. We tried a few products that didn't go very well. And as we're sort of combing through the wreckage of those failures, we're talking to lots and lots of users and, and potential customers and figuring out what was really missing for them in the news landscape. And that's when we figured out that, you know, what, what people are really frustrated by was opinionated news and very slanted news, news framed a certain way to lead you to a conclusion that was what was really upsetting people. And so that's how we zeroed in on the positioning and then mm. built really the whole company around that. Uh, and it's really hit a nerve. I mean, we uh, have incredible engagement. Uh, our newsletter now, I think, has almost about a 45 to 50% open rate, which is quite high. I think it's higher than, you know, probably industry leaders like Axios or something like that. So we know we have really good engagement. We've got really good growth. And uh, we're just starting to prove the monetization around it as well, which is really a big part out of, you know, you, you correctly said that it's so hard to make a living doing high quality journalism. And that's largely because we've moved to a model where it's largely advertising based. Mm -hmm. And any sort of business that's heavily advertising based, it's hard not to, you know, drive towards clickbait and, and sort of egregious headlines because that, that's what gets the eyeballs, right? Mm -hmm. um, and what we're proving at the factual is there are no ads on the factual. It's a subscription mm -hmm. and a very affordable one. Uh, we charge $3 a month or $12 a year. And it's a price point that we think is very affordable for anyone uh, in the U.S. and around the world to get credible factual news. And so we're just starting to see that, yeah, this is indeed true. The hypothesis that people will pay for quality journalism, provided it's affordable, uh, is, is turning out to be true. So we're not, you know, I think uh, the New York Times and, and Wall Street Journal, those guys have proven that, of course, people will pay. But... It's quite expensive sure. for the average American, I think. Um, yeah. And so we're saying, that's great. It's great if you've got the money and, and you really like those outlets, they're good outlets. But for the rest of us, we're going to do something that's more affordable and you can still get really high quality. Uh, and, you know, the, the beauty of this is uh, a lot of people ask me, it's like, man, what a time to be in the news business. It's so awful. And my answer is, it's actually the golden age of news. Mm -hmm. And people are like, are you crazy? This is such a terrible time. And I'll say, actually, there's amazing writing out there. Such good journalists on a cross political spectrum, on the left and the right, like really thoughtful uh, journalists who are doing a ton of research, providing so much more context and history beyond just the facts. But that journalism is lost amidst the massive torrent of clickbait bias junk. And so mm -hmm. what the factual algorithm and our technology and our curation does is weed out the garbage, find the really good stuff, give you the facts, give you all the context, allow you as a reader to come to the conclusions. We're not going to find the conclusions. You're going to make the conclusions because at the end of the day, reading news is actually, it requires critical judgment. It requires critical thinking. And that's what we want to do. We want to give you all the information so you, the reader, are empowered to make a decision and, and reach a conclusion. Man, I love that. I'm a big fan, and I'm glad to have met you because uh, a man in the news of my own heart. So I'll give you a little fun fact <laughs> that, you, that you can fact check me on and see if it's factual. Yeah. <laughs> um, on, uh, out of all the interviews I've done in period, I will not allow a single piece of clickbait on our website. And just to give you a, a, a very specific example, um, we, I, I, won't, I would not allow regardless. And, you know, I get pitched by PR people all day long that want their clients in the show. And, you know, a PR person is going to do what they're supposed to do. So I'm, there's nothing against PR. Their job is to get somebody in an outlet. And outlets have mm -hmm. some, what's the keywords of today? Not to date this, but if anybody's listening to this, we're, re uh, we're recording this in 2020. So the keywords of today are pandemic, COVID-19, and anything related to a pandemic. And so right. it doesn't matter what you are. If you're a lawyer, if you're a dentist, Dentist. Dentists are being pitched as talking about how their dental offices are for a <laughs> pandemic. A dentist is not a freaking, okay, you might be a doctor, but you're not a, like, a expert on pandemic or COVID-19 or anything else. That's just clickbait type content. So I'll, I'll, I would not, I will not allow a single headline and you can check this. Google or look at our website, put COVID on there and you will not find, you might find out of my three, my catalog of over 3,000 interviews, you might find like four or five that are that actually have the word COVID in the entire article or headline or anything else or pandemic. And that's because these were people that were actually working on the medical technology of it, 
So it's like they are the top. They're actually working on it. It's not like your right. brother had it. So your brother had it, and you're a lawyer, and you advised your brother on it. So now you're going to do to give an episode or an interview on the pandemic. No, you're not. Get out of here. <laughs> but but I know I know that I I know that possibly my traffic may suffer because of that. But no, the brand does not because people know um, they hold us as a different, a completely different view of your typical media outlet. So that's what like the little guys like me. I'm a small little media company compared to like a Forbes or something else, right? Um, but that being said. For me, when I hear the factual, I'm like, oh, man, thank you. There's somebody out there fighting for us, man. Thank you. Keep on doing the great work. That's what I think of it. I think, actually, the thing is, Adam, your your example is very, very good and appropriate for uh, what we do. Our big finding, like when we built the algorithm, we thought, big deal. You know, it's just going to rate the New York Times and the Journal and the Post Mm-mm. and all these guys at the Mm-mm. top. And what really surprised us is that, actually, no, the smaller outlets were reading yep. really well. And competing, and and if you peel back what I said about the four factors behind the algorithm, mm-hmm. all of them are really a proxy for expertise, right? Mm-hmm. Do you research and cite your work heavily? Do you focus on a topic and write extensively on it? Do you are you less opinionated? You're, typically, people that are uh, experts on a topic realize that topics are complicated, and mm-hmm. if you use really blunt language like, oh, it's obviously this or that, they say, look, you've got to understand, it's, it's like this, like this, here's the pros and cons. Mm-hmm. And so that language is also moderated. All this then feeds into our algorithm and scores highly. And so the, the aha for us was there is great journalism out there. It's a lot of times on smaller news outlets that you don't know about. And if you read it, you'll find out that, oh, my goodness, you really, like the world is not as crazy as it seems to be. You can actually feel calm reading the news versus feeling agitated or angry, and it's cursory of the little guys a lot of the time. And you can actually learn something, like actually learn something. So, for example, in my role, I learn something every day because I'm, I have people talk on what they're experts in and what they're doing. So I guess we're not as fancy as you are, June, so the algorithm here is called me, but <laughs> that being said, it's called me and my BS test and what you want to talk about and whether I'm willing to talk about it. So the algorithm is called Adam Torres, but um, we're, we're, that, I, I love the, what you're doing because I get it and that's what I, we live every single day, so I'm just, I'm just a big fan of your work. Um, so Arjun, that being said, um, if somebody is listening to this, so there's a couple of different ways I want, I want to position this for you. Um, number one, we have people out there that are perfect to be listeners. Um, so not, not number one, and they want, or not listeners, but followers, readers, and they want to, they want to connect with the brand. And then on the other side of things, I'm sure there's, there's writers out there, there's journalists, there's different, you know, different levels of ways that people can work with, with you or, or, or small media outlets. I mean, give us some options and some ways that it makes sense for the people listening to, to connect overall and work with the factual. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, as a reader, the simplest thing you can do is just go to thefactual.com and sign up for the newsletter. It's a world-class product. It's the one we put the most effort into every day, um, and it's where most of our users are. So sign up for the newsletter at thefactual.com. Uh, best first step you can do. Beyond that, I would say, you know, follow us on social where we share a lot of content, not just content that uh, we rate, but even surveys and research. If you're in the media space and you care about uh, the problems we're solving, then I think following us on social is a really good way to keep in touch. Um, if you want to get really fancy, you can actually uh, install our Chrome browser extension and get our ratings right in your Facebook and Twitter feed. And so if that's where you get your news, you'll start to see the Factual's ratings in there and guide you to the best content. If you're on Reddit, we have a Reddit bot uh, that also gives you our ratings right in Reddit. So there's a lot of different places you can find the Factual. Um, and then if you're a writer, you know, really, you don't have to do a ton. You, if you're writing for any one of the thousand news outlets that we already rate, then we'll automatically pick up your writing in our daily crawl and, and rating uh, feed. But if you're not seeing it, you know, just install the Chrome extension and then load up the article. That'll automatically suck that into our system. And you can start to see how your writing fares on the factual. What's really cool is we've actually had a few journalists reach out to us saying, hey, how come I only got a 72%? So our rating is wow. percentage. They're like, how come I only got 72? I did this and this. And then we go over it and they're like, oh, yeah, actually, that's a fair point. And we give them an example. Here's someone that scored an 84. And they're like, oh, actually, that is kind of better. Um, 
And so it's really good. I'm, I'm hoping that it, you know, it, it uh, gives journalists a, a neutral assessment. I mean, we're not perfect, and, and I wouldn't say of that. Course. Like, if you get a low score with us, it doesn't mean that you've necessarily written a bad job. It just means that we can't validate and verify a lot of things with the computer algorithm. Um, but a lot of journalists, or not uh, quite a few journalists now, have reached out and said, this is a really helpful guide, kind of like Grammarly. You think about mm. Grammarly, you know, it helps all of us write better. Well, the factual helps journalists write better. Fantastic. Well, Arjun, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about your background and all the great stuff you're doing at The Factual and to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes Store, and if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Business, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some comments on the video. Love to know what kind of projects and things that you're working on. And Arjun, thanks again for coming on the show. Thank you very much, Adam. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you. Have a great evening.